There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire There was another in the waters Holding back the seas and Should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire There is another For the beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world Holding back 
joy from every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be together we see
better, do it better, do it better, do it better. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, what a name. What a name you've given us, Lord, through which we call you Abba Father. The name of Lord that is so sweet than any other thing on this planet. And I want to thank you, God, for your mission coming to deliver us from the powers of darkness. Lord, you came down and put on flesh like man, but your flesh that you put on like man was holy flesh. And when we eat it, Lord, we are transformed to be holy. Thank you, Lord, for loving us that far. Thank you, Lord, that we can shout your glory and shout your name and lift your name higher even when we are men on this planet. But because of you, we have been called and given the name children of God. So, Father, we want to shout hallelujah. We want to shout hosanna because of who you've made us to be, my Father. We want to call upon you, my Father, as we begin this service, that you will come down and speak to us, that you will come down and perform your miracles, that you will come down and avail yourself that you are around. Let every person hear your presence, Lord. Let every person accept your word that you will be with us till the end of the ages. We want you in this service, my father. Come and use your servant, Lord, for whom you've prepared to bring the word forth from you. Bless and anoint him more and more that he will speak from you, God, and we shall listen and all your children will be transformed, my God. We need you more than ever. I want to pray that you bless all our choirs and most especially this choir in this service, that you bless them. Bless those who are uh, organizing the drums, the guitars. Lord, that your name will be glorified and we shall shout Hosanna. Bless us, O oh Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So I want to welcome the choir again. Put your hands to welcome the choir. And welcome yourselves. Welcome your neighbor too. With a wonderful smile. Hallelujah. Take off. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Wow. Give him a hand of praise. And you know what? We are the pastor's children. Any pastor's child in there who has not joined the choir, thank you for coming. We are happy to see all of us and we are going to worship. We are going to dance until our clothes drop. And don't laugh because you know when you laugh what happens. Let's praise the Lord with all that we are. He's a good God, isn't it? Praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, oh Father. Now I dance like a winner. Praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, oh Father. Now I dance like a winner. I will praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, oh Father. Now I dance like a winner. Praise you, Lord, for your grace on my life. You have blessed me, oh Father.
Lord, we bless your name for you are worth this celebration and even more. Father, you're the reason for our existence. Thank you, Lord, that you love us this much and that we are here to sing and dance and celebrate who you are. Take your place, Lord, even while we worship. We know that you're here to meet our needs. You are here to set us free because your word says that whenever we praise, your presence comes and abides. Thank you for you are here. You are glorious, Lord. You are glorious, Lord.
above every other name, O oh Lord, because, Lou, you alone deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we thank you and we bless your holy name for this evening. We worship you, King of Kings, O oh Lord. We choose to dwell in your house, Lord, because it is better to be in your presence than be elsewhere, King of Kings, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the protection. We thank you for the provision. Father, because of all that, we are in this place, Lord, and we glorify your holy name. We don't take it for granted that we are in this place. We don't take it for granted that we are able to breathe, King of Kings, O oh Lord. So, Father, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you, Abba Father, for all the great things that you have done in our lives, O oh Lord. And, Father, we come in your presence to ask you, O oh Lord, to forgive us where we have gone astray, knowingly or unknowingly in action or in thought or in deed, O oh Lord. 
Father, we pray that you will forgive us for the sins that we have committed, for the times, O oh Lord, that we have swayed away from your kingdom, for the times that we have taken life in our own hands, forgetting that it is you that owns the earth and all that is in it, O oh Lord. Father, we pray that you will forgive us and you will and will be worthy to be in your presence this evening, King of Kings, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, for all that you have taken us through today. We thank you, King of Kings, that we are able to worship you together in this sanctuary, even for those that are online, King of Kings, O oh Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to gather, to be able to fellowship together as one family of St. Francis and even those that are probably not regular attendance, King of Kings, O oh Lord. So, Lord, this evening we lift uh, this entire service into your hands that, Lord, your message will come forth to our hearts, King of Kings, O oh Lord. I pray that you'll open our ears, King of Kings, O oh Lord, to listen to your word, Abba Father, that, Lord, it will not fall on dry ground, King of Kings, O oh Lord, but, Father, you'll prepare our hearts and your message shall find us ready to receive it and that, Lord, it will transform our lives in one way or another, O oh Lord. We pray for the speaker, King of Kings, O oh Lord, that you will use him mightly, that, Lord, you will use him as a vessel, King of Kings, O oh Lord, and that, Lord, he will be able to bring forth your word to the glory of your name. Lord, we lift your church into your hands, King of Kings, O oh Lord. For the church, King of Kings, O oh Lord, is yours. We pray that, Father, you will continue to use the people that you have anointed to be in the places of leadership in the church, from the archbishop to the bishops to the clergy to the laity to the lay people, King of Kings, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that in one or another, in whichever place that we serve, King of Kings, O oh Lord, you will use all of us to be able to transform this nation and the world at large, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that the church will be of great and positive influence, King of Kings, O oh Lord, that King of Glory, as we gather to worship, O oh Lord, our lives shall attract other people that are not able to, to come to church, that our lives shall attract people that we serve with, that we work with, in our workplaces, that our lives shall be a way of living, King of Kings, that shall attract those that do not know you as their personal Savior, King of Kings, O oh Lord. I pray that you will differentiate us, King of Kings, O oh Lord, as believers, that, Lord, will be able to show a good example to those that would love to know you, but have probably been blocked by the enemy, O oh Lord, that, Father, even just the way we live will be an attraction for those that do not know you to know you, King of Kings, O oh Lord. And, Father, I pray for our nation, Uganda, like our motto says, for God and my country, King of Kings, O oh Lord. I pray that this nation will be a nation that has people that are after your own heart. We pray for men and women, King of Kings, that are in places of leadership, that there will be people that know you, that know you and know you by heart, King of Kings, O oh Lord. That, Father, they will serve this nation as they know that they are serving you and not themselves or their families, King of Kings, O oh Lord. We come against all those bad spirits that are in this nation, King of Kings, O oh Lord. Father, we pray against corruption, embezzlement, my master. Father, different things that are happening, King of Kings, that do not glorify your holy name, O oh Lord. Father, we pray that you will put the right people in the right places, that they will be of great influence to win more souls to you, King of Kings, O oh Lord. And Father, we pray that you will continue to transform people in this nation, King of Kings, O oh Lord, and that, Lord, we shall also even influence other nations, King of Glory, to come to you, O oh Lord. We remember those that are sick, my master, that, Lord, wherever they are, even if it is someone in this place, O oh Lord, that, Father, whatever is not right in their bodies, you will put it right. Your word tells us that by your stripes we are healed, so, Lord, we want to believe this word this evening, that whoever came to this place and has any issue, even if it is a headache or anything, King of Kings, O oh Lord, and Father, you will heal them. And in the same vein, we remember to commit this nation into your hands, O oh Lord, for the outbreak of Ebola. We come against any spirit of Ebola in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord, that, Father, it will not spread any further, King of Kings, O oh Lord, that those that are already victims, you will heal them in the mighty name of Jesus, King of Kings, O oh Lord. Father, we pray that you will bring healing to this nation and to the world at large, O oh Lord. And, Father, I lift individual needs into your hands, O oh Lord, for every 
world that is in this place, oh Lord. There is a reason as to why they are in this place. For some, it is just probably say thank you so that you will multiply their blessings, oh Lord. For some, it could be someone looking for a job. For some students, it could be that tuition that is not yet fulfilled, oh Lord. Father, you are the God that owns cattle on a thousand hills. I pray, King of Kings, that you provide for the students that are in need of tuition, that are in need of accommodation, that are in need of the basic needs like food, shelter, oh Lord, that Father, you will make a way for them, King of Kings, oh Lord. And Father, even for other things that our hearts desire, I pray that you will grant them according to riches in glory. So now, Lord, we pray and we dedicate this evening into your hands that, Lord, this time that we shall spend in your presence will not be in vain and that, Lord, you will minister to each one of us in one way or another to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord for the worship. For those who are just coming in, you're very welcome. Let's appreciate the worship team. Thank you very, very much. And the intercessor, let's now have our reader. Let's have the minister of the word. Praise God. Today's reading is coming from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 8. Isaiah 41, verse 8. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham and, friend, and my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from the farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant, I've chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I'll strengthen you, I'll help you. I'll uphold you with my victorious right hand. Behold, all who are in sin, Incensed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing as shall perish. You shall seek those who con contend with you, but you shall not find them. Those who war against you shall be as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is, it is I who say to you, Fear not, I'll help you. Fear not, you whom Jacob, you men of Israel, I'll have, I'll help you, says the Lord. Your, your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. That's the word of God. Thank you very much. May we now put our hands together. As we welcome our chaplain, the Reverend Irene Hakan Kwasa. Let's clap our hands. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Let us clap to the Lord that he has brought us in his sanctuary. Yes. You are all welcome to this, our midweek service. Let us give a hand clap to this great choir. Did you see them? They call them, themselves PKs. Do you know what that means? How many of you know what that means? Hey, quite a number doesn't know. What does it mean, John? Pastors, kids. 
Thank you so much, Pastors Kids, for ministering to us this evening. Yes, greetings from the chaplain. This is his second week on leave, but he is well, and he sends you greetings. Do you receive them? Amen. Yes, uh, I want to introduce to us our preacher. Our preacher this evening is an engineer. He's called Belabose Dixon. Those of you who come from Xoro, I'm sure you know the meaning of that name. Yes, yes. Dixon is married to Catherine Barabose. She too is an engineer. There are two engineers in the home. Praise the Lord. So those of you who are engineers, you better get that vision. Yes, they are blessed with four children, two girls and two boys. I met this guy way back in 2010. I was ordained in 2009. And in 2010, I was posted to Chambogo University, St. Kakumba Chapel. So this guy was in that church, serving the Lord. But after I had left, he even became a head of laity. Do you know what a head of laity means? Mukuru wa yo. So he served in that capacity. Uh, he works with this company, Associated Design and Build Engineers. This is your company, sir. Okay. Yeah, those of you who want jobs. <laughs> after he has preached, please run after him. You never know he may be having a job for you, especially those young engineers who have just finished. Uh, he's going to talk to us on this topic. God will hold you. God will do what? Hold you. He will not leave you alone. He will hold you. I don't know what what situation you are going through and you feel as if God has abandoned you. But the, the word of God is telling us God will hold you. Even in the den of lions as he held Daniel, he will do what? He will hold you. And before he comes, I am sure there are people with testimonies. This time it is strictly two. So please, if you have a testimony, run and give it two, one, two. Mm -hmm. And please, I'm not giving you many minutes, one minute. Come also, so that we balance. The... Please tell us your name, and be brief. Tell us what God has done for you. Praise God, church. My name is Christine. Um, I'm in year two, I do electrical engineering. I thank God so much for this day. I thank God so much for my life. Last semester, we did a certain course in it that was very hard for me. I had not passed the test, and the course in it was very hectic, so we did the exam. But after the exam, I was still scared. Then I kind of forgot about it. But when they were telling us results are almost getting released now, the fear started coming. I remembered that paper. I was very scared. I prayed to God. I fasted. I'm like, God, if you help me pass this paper, I'll give thanks to you. And I thank God so much because I passed the paper. I did not get any retake. I bless his name so much for that. And I also thank God. I applied for a certain scholarship and he gave it to me. I thank him so much. Yeah, may the good Lord bless you. Praise God, church. My name is Namirim Samali. I mean, my third year. On Wednesday, I had an evening lecture. It was... It was ending at six. 
So as I was getting out of the lecture, I had a discussion with my friends outside there, but I could, I could listen to people worshiping here. So I had a voice telling me, you go for fellowship. Then I had, we had a program with a friend. Then I told her, Vivian, I feel like I want to go for a, fo for a fellowship. She told me, but we have a program already. We went for what we had to do. Reaching home, I had some money. I had called my landlord, told him that you come from your money. I have it already. That night, you people, to be honest, God speaks. That night, we cooked supper, and after supper, I told my friend, this money that I have, how can I call my auntie? And I'm like, they stole the money she gave me for rent. Then I was like, let me even leave it. I went to bed. I, no, before I went to bed, I, I told my friend, I feel like washing my what? My handkerchiefs and whatever. So I was like, let me even wash the, the panty that I was putting on that night, that day. So I went to bed. And after prayer, I was like, but have you ever slept naked in your life? I went into my case, picked a book, uh, picked a, a capanti, put it on, then I went to bed. You people at around, in my phone, I had set an alarm. It could ring at exactly three for prayer. On that day, I didn't wake up. It rang and I was like, no, I will not pray. So I had downloaded some, some, some kasop like five episodes, but at night before I slept, I only watched one. So I had something telling me, over you watch a soap, at least one episode and go back to sleep. I said, no. You people, it was clocking to 3.30. The thieves entered our room. When I was sleeping, because I had just gone back to sleep, I had something telling me, why don't you remove that bag? that has the money for the landlord. I woke up, I said, yes. Turning my head like this, there was a man inside the house. I asked the man, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> then, the man was like, keep quiet. At that same time, I saw another one on the doorway. There were two people. So I started screaming and shouting, calling for help. Then my friend was sleeping because for her, even if you ask her, she was like, Samali, <laughs> And I was like, because, you see, because, because me, I had already started by the time she woke up, but we are sleeping on the same bed. So they, they took, my phone had an iPhone, Mine had just bought it. It had not even made two months. They took the money. They took all the, all the bags. The man was like, hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> So at some point, my phone, I had not charged it. I sleep with my Bible in the bed. So I told my friend, I'm not going to charge my phone. It was on the Bible. But since I resisted, since I, since I insisted to shouting and what and what they put on the, they, 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 they turned on the torch it was it had a lot of light that we couldn't even see but i don't know what was on my mind i was like i can attack these people i attacked one man to an extent that in our room that man left a cape so i ran that night i ran after those people <laughs> That night, I went after those people, those two men, at a, for, for a, some distance. Reaching somewhere, I found out that there were four people. So, I had someone saying, And something spoke into my mind, and I was like, what if my eye, what if I lose my eye? I went back calling my friend Vivian, the money, our phones. You people, this, those men didn't have shirts. And I'm, I'm really grateful to God because for the past days, it happened on Wednesday night. For the past days, I've not been, we've not been sleeping in that rental. 
we had shifted, we even had to go back home. We came back on Sunday. So I said this Wednesday, I even told my friend, I cannot miss a fellowship. Because I cannot say that my God didn't do anything, but I resisted the spirit, what it was telling me. You never know if I had woken up and prayed, it, I would have had people on the door. But I'm really grateful to God, but we are not raped. And for these injuries that I got, because I went after them for the past days, I've not been able to walk. And even my back, it got some problems. Because in the room, when we switched on the light, we saw big, big stones. And even outside the room, we saw big, big stones. Even getting these injuries and what, I didn't hear them unless... So I'm really grateful to God for my life. Praise the Lord Church. Hallelujah. My name is Aizuka Alan. I'm a second year law student. I'm here to testify about the name of the Lord, especially for my life. Today, I make 22 years. I say 22 intentionally because of the 22 years I've spent 10 years confessing Christ. And previously, those days I, I was a kid before 12 years, but then I was living a life that was not, not worthy of the Lord. And our family is a family that not, knows Christ. People would preach, I would listen, but then going back, I would steal, I would fight. I remember running after my sister with a panga. I failed to get her, so I chopped her, her jumper into pieces. I had a temper that was uncontrollable. And my friends knew me that the moment you disturbed me, I was so small. But when Christ came into my life, I saw transformation. <clears throat> 2012, the time I gave my life to Christ, I had lost hope. I was a sickly boy, and most of the time, I would be home, not at school. I would spend like two weeks at home, one at school, two. I remember in that year, 2012, there's a, a nurse. A nurse said that someone was asking her, how is this boy? Is he sick again? And she said, you know, this one is bound to die. But I thank God. And she said it in vernacular, and you know how it hurts. So I also lost hope in that time. But then, when I gave my life to Christ, I can't say things became smooth immediately, but it's, my life started to change. I started to have the hope I never had. That time I was supposed to, to undergo a surgery, but the next year, in 2013, we went to a hospital where they were supposed to operate me, um, they to operate the appendix, but then the doctor said, you go back home, the child is not sick. And subsequently, I became a normal person, no more sickness. I've been living normally, and I, I usually tell my friends, it's a miracle spending one year, two years, three years without going to the hospital. <laughs> Lastly, I wish to encourage you that giving your life to Christ and being in the presence of God, sacrificing, not doing the things of the world, not being excited about the things of the world. There's no difference if you don't have Christ. You will keep suffering, but then cry, and there will be no change. But I find peace in the name of the Lord. I, find, I found favor in his presence. Ever since that time, I find everything smooth. I find him provide, and he has been great. And I, I wish all of you would know Christ. May the Lord bless you. Praise God. God is good. And all the time. My name is Sam Umrok Chosen. And by God's grace, I'm saved and delivered. I want to start by asking for forgiveness from Aunt Irene. You know, she made a call for two people, but I was up there. So 
had, had already made my step, so I had to come here. Okay, thank you for bringing me. I did become accounting option, completed by God's grace, and I'm waiting graduation. <laughs> that aside, my one testimony is today is about the goodness of Christ. It's not about provision of our words, but today it's for the goodness of Christ. Today I stand here. I want to thank God for the revival which is taking place in Teso land. I stand here as one of the disciples from Teso land who have been convicted by the Spirit to revive Teso Anglican Youth Missioners. So, this year, this is a year of hope beyond affliction. We have gone through all those afflictions as part of Teso. We are here in Makara University, but we don't have an altar for God to intercede for our families. Soon we are leaving campus, but don't have the mission. So, this year, we thank God that the fellowship is already there. We fellowship from here every Monday from 5 to, to 7, from this very place where you are seated. So the theme is restore us, O oh Lord, God of hosts. It's, get, it's gotten from the book of Psalms, chapter 80, from verse 19. If you read this psalm, it talks about restoration of Israel. So we want the Lord to restore us. Then the motto is being the light, being the salt and the light of the world. So people from Teso, and they use from Teso. This time for us to take a step forward. To stand in our positions. Like the word of God says that this mission or this battle is for the Lord. And as he told us in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 17. Talks about take our position. So today I'm here to urge you that let us come and stand together as we seek for guidance from our chapel leadership. So I, I, I call upon all people from Teso, the youth, please come and let us fellowship together. The Lord is with us. He will help us and is there to fight our battles. Thank you. Yeah, we thank God so much for those testimonies. Thank you for testifying about the goodness of the Lord. Go there. We want to we want to sing you a song on your birthday. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alan. Happy birthday to you. Another another stanza. May the good Lord bless you, to Jesus be true. May God's Holy Spirit remain over you. Yes, let us thank God for those testimonies. Father Almighty, we give you thanks, we give you praise for these testimonies that have been said and those that are not yet said. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you protected our sister from being raped. Heavenly Father, we learn that we need when you wake us up in the middle of the night, we need to pray. Perhaps if she had prayed, those thieves wouldn't have taken her money. But Lord God, you are God of restoration. I pray that that money will be restored, that, that that phone will be restored, that everything that they took, oh Lord, that they will get double, double, because Lord, you are God of restoration. Thank you for Alan and for the 22 years that he has been living on this planet earth. Thank you, Lord God, that he was satisfying of how you have sustained him. He used to be very sick. And some people thought that he would die. But Lord God, he has not died. 
and you have changed Lord God, his life, and he, he has been living in divine good health. I pray, King of glory, that he will continue in that health, O King of glory. Thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing in the life of this guy from Teso. Thank you, King of glory, for the revival that you are doing in his life. And I pray that through him that you bring men unto you and women unto you, O King of glory. That, that this revival spread, not only in Teso, but throughout Uganda, O King of glory. We give you thanks, O King of kings. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I now invite the preacher to come and share what God has put on his heart. Thank you, Reverend Irene. Um, praise the Lord. Good evening. Yes, I'm Verabose Dixon, an engineer, and I am married to one wife, Catherine Verabose, an engineer too, and we together serve the Lord. Amen? In that engineering, we serve the Lord. Yes. Um, I served as, as head of late at Chambogo University, and, uh, but before that, uh, uh, Irene was my chaplain, and she would do ogre well with the students at the university there, and uh, it was good. But before you knew it, she was already here. I mean, she was taken to All Saints Cathedral, and I thought we lost her, but that's the goodness of the Lord, because she's strong and better and serving the Lord. Amen? Uh, I'm part of uh, my fellowship of St. Francis as well. You see the goodness of the Lord? Kakumba Chapel, St. Francis Chapel. And uh, we are from Namgongo. So my fellowship is Namgongo, but Chila, Chaliwajara, Chira. So my home is in Namgongo at Uganda Matters Church. So when it's Uganda Matters Day, I actually walk to church. I don't drive, I don't ride, I walk church with other with the other pilgrims when they are walking i also join them and walk but the difference is that me i walk 273 meters and not even half a kilometer and i reach the 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 sanctuary at the at the uganda matters yeah uh, let's pray father in heaven we thank you king of glory we thank you for today King of Kings. We thank you that you have given us a bright day today and we glorify in it, Father. We thank you that tonight you'll make it better, King of Kings, that there will be no thief at our houses, King of Glory, that we shall have a better night. And when it is time to pray, we shall wake up and pray, King of Glory, and seek your face, Father. Tomorrow morning we shall wake up when we are better and brighter and able to work for you, King of Glory. I thank the University Chapel, Makere University Chapel, King of Glory, for the work they are doing in this student's King of Glory, and the faculty as well, King of Kings. That the students that get out of here, King of Glory, have all growth in life, King of Glory, and especially knowing you, King of Kings. The revival is, go is going to go on in Teso community, King of Glory, cut us off this chapel, cut us off this preaching, Father. Take this preaching to her, not King of Glory. Take this chapel to her, not King of Glory, that all will be well. Now, King of Kings, this evening, come, King of Glory, come and be part of this King of Kings that you talk to us, Father, that you give us your word, King of Glory, that together we shall say, Amen, King of Kings. In your great name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. But it's better that uh, you know me a little bit better than an engineer, a, a husband to an engineer, a servant of God, and someone also. Um, yeah. I was born, born many years ago in Kisoro. You will tell the age by what I'm going to tell you, but I'll be very brief. 
uh, I, re I left this university in 1999. But I was three years late. So I should have left 1996, having done a four-year course. 1996 minus four, and then you add on the years. You can know now what age. I know Alan that time, there was not even a trace of thing that Alan would be there. But God knew him that he would be there, right? Yeah. So what do I believe in? And as we do our work of engineering, um, we serve the road in the engineering sector. I have this belief that the young people, their goodness, their walking to Christ, their innovation in their minds, their spiritual journey depends on the big people, depends on us, like my children depend on me. Huh? I teach them the ways of the Lord and they do not depart from it, right? Even other aspects of life, behaving well, conserving the environment, all of those things. All the people, we don't sit there and uh, lament that these young ones are like this, like this, like this. That is our responsibility. We have to come back and say what went wrong. And we still have time. So let's begin now and impart the right skills that we want in our children, the right do's and don'ts. When I wake up, what should I do? What should I not do? Those things. Hmm? Yeah. So I believe that the innovation that our children should have, or the no innovation, the spiritual growth and all that depends on us. On us. And therefore, the generation, the present generation, is responsible for the future generation. Uh, for everything. For everything. When you prepare your children to be extremely comfortable, that they don't trigger their brains to think, they will not think. When you make life so hard for them or so that they feel frustrated, they will be frustrated. So there has to be a balance on triggering someone to think, but also making them feel at home, like a father does, like a mother does. So we are responsible for this. But I want to thank the university uh, and also the chaplaincy of this chapel for doing good to, our, to this generation, to the young ones that are taking over from us. Um, I work with about uh, six, seven, engineers and non-engineers in my office. Then some in the field who have la laborers who are also guided by engineers and technicians. When we have work, we can be like 40 of us, maybe 40, maybe 50 sometimes, but they can also drop to, to 20, to 10, to 15. But um, I want to say this, that uh, when these guys come to look for work in my company, you'll hear I, uh, I was papa at, for SU at Makerere University. I was uh, in charge of Kwaim at Chambogo University. I was this and this at Ndejo University, UCU, and I thank the Lord for that. Thank you for what you are doing. So this is what I believe in. I think I still have time. I have about 30 minutes. I've done about five of them. This is what I believe in. That us, the big people, we need to take our place and uh, guide the young ones. Now, my heart gets so broken, as in we really get broken when I see um, some company is recruiting young people especially girls, to go and work in an Arab country. And what work are they going to do? It's not the work that you have prepared them to do so well. No, it's to whom it may concern. Go there and work. Now, when you come to see the CEO of this company, of these companies that are sending them there, the, 
when you come to see the, the owners of these companies, they are our leaders, as in big leaders, like MPs, like big generals, who are supposed to guide us on what to do. Because this work that is done the other side is the same work that you can do here and instead transform our country, make it a better place. Now we take our labor elsewhere that should have been our own labor. And when you, you say something, you know, there are many things that go on that side with our girls, a lot of things that go on with them. When you say something, and you are like, but how could you do this? Can't you think? Because you have the tools to think, you have the platform to talk, you have, you have given A, B, C, D, you are in a better position to tell us what to do. You get it? Eh? Agriculture, for instance, is one of those things that are despised and they cannot. But you see, there are many things that make it a bad, a bad sector, which these guys together can make it a much better sector than anything else. Let me tell you, part of the work we do, we carry, sometimes we carry cement and the blocks. You carry it from here, you give it to someone who is putting it together. You carry it from here, carry, and you find that that work is so hard than someone weeding crops, than someone pruning, than someone harvesting tea, than someone looking after coffee. You find the other work is so hard, but someone wants to do this one because at the end of the day, he has maybe 15,000 shillings in his pocket. The other one, when he waits, even there is no, there is no, no chemicals, the ones you get are adulterated. There is no market for these things. So I'm like, when I look at all these, I'm like, we are supposed to give guidance. Now, what or the best we can do is to throw our children to the other side to be done this and this and this. We are not walking the talk. This is not what God put us here to do. And then someone bashes is like, we, the other girl brought money for this, for this. Because of all that incident that happens maybe once a month, but that once a month is very painful. So let's wake up the elders and we do what we are supposed to do. But in order that, for me to be at peace, it's God. When God holds you, you are at peace and you are able to do what you are supposed to do. So in order that, in order that, the question is, if Dixon, Belarus, you don't have a platform to do that, if, if you talk, they cannot listen. If you organize something, it cannot be done because you don't have maybe, eh? What have you done, you, 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 yourself? So in our, that company, which Reverend Red, Associated Design and Build Engineers, we do building work, but also we are water engineers, so water and irrigation. So the irrigation component is what we thought about and we thought that uh, agriculture given water and uh, whatever, it's, it's, it's the initial value addition to agriculture. So we are trying to, to, to put, to do what we can in our, in our sack of influence. In our sack of influence, let's see what can be done so that maybe something is liked and we don't see people, those who are not qualified like the lawyers, the, the electrical engineers, the whatever, that they can do something also, isn't it? Yeah, actually when I was growing up, I was like, I'm not going to be a permanent secretary, which is true, I cannot be, I will not be. Because I work for this private company and I'm the CEO, I can't do much eh? than that, I can't go more than that. I'm not going to be a minister, but I should change society. That was me when I was growing up. So I want us, all of us, to think that way, that society can be changed, that society, because of our influence, because we have gone to school, we have, we have tools to use to do that. Eh? If you are going to tweet, tweet something that can bring hope, 
that can uh, trigger innovation, that can, uh, you know, put life into somebody. If you are going to, uh, to is it Imo? There's tweet, Twitter, eh? the Facebook. Facebook is not very popular like before. Government put a little bit of, uh, but it is on. It is on. So if you are going to Facebook, do something that um, breeds peace, puts energy into someone, innovation, and also triggers somebody to think, and then he, he gets there. Amen? Uh, Murakoze. So it goes in Verabose. That name, that name Verabose, is the is a good name. It means being there for all. Vera, be there. Bose, bona, eh, be there for all. If you're a judge and you are, someone tells you A B C D A B C D A B C D. The other one tells you, it's like this. So you judge and you say, yeah, the balance is tilting this way, this way, but more of this way, but you do this and this. So you be there for all of them. You don't be biased and say, because you, you came, shall be redressed, not obeying the, 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 the code of conduct in the law courtroom. I sentence you, no. Be there for all. That's what the name means. So if you like it, you can, you can take it. And name your child that name. It's a very good name. So, God will hold you. Two questions. Why will God hold me? Then the bigger question is, what do I need to do for God to hold me? So, the, what's the essence for God to hold you? And what does it mean in a way for God to hold you? Is there some sanitizer? Yes. Let me do this. You know, we have, we have young children, us, us the big people, uh, six years, seven years, four years, two years. When you get a child and you are like, my son, I love you so much. There's a sense of assurance. Eh? You get it? Or, I forgive you on that, don't do it again. A sense of belonging. A sense of security. Even when I have done wrong and the world is judging me, my father forgives me and he welcomes me back. Hmm? And you remember all of those things. God will hold me. The earthly father holding you means that security, means sense of belonging, meaning that I'm your father, you not need when I'm there. You get it? Whatever you do, turn back to me. I'm there for you, my son. Don't be discouraged. Always turn to me, and I'm go your good friend. And so there is peace. You feel secure, you feel, you feel peaceful. So when God holds us, irrespective of where you are, irrespective of what you are doing, there is peace that comes to you that you cannot understand. And that's the most important thing. When God holds you, there is peace that you feel. That you, so you go an extra mile when you are not you you are you you are work, worked out and you felt that it was too much for you. You feel like you want to go an extra mile. Because there is some peace in you. There is some sense of belonging. I belong to him. Who, who, the most high. There is some sense of um, security. You are not afraid, you are not discouraged. You feel strong enough. So the bigger part of that question is this. What do I need to do for God to hold me? 
What do I need to do for God to hold me? Right? Um, if you read Peter, First Peter, chapter 5, 6, 11, chapter 5, verse 6. To 11. You read it in your time, but uh, so you have to humble yourself under the mighty power of God. You have to give your worries and cares to God. Make him your personal savior. The chaplain was saying when she was introduced in here, uh, the story of uh, of uh, there's this story of Job, Job alone, then even Joseph, eh? those stories. Because this, if, if Job was not plugged in the road, it would have been a really bad situation. But Job persisted, and because he had that hand of God, he had to focus. And at the end, what Job lost, it was replaced in multiples. We are conversant with that story. Give your worries and cares to God. Do not hold on to many, many earthly things. Don't hold on to many earthly things, but give things to Christ, to God, so that he's able to hold you. When you saw how I, I held my friend, whom I was calling my son. But, uh, sir, how old are you? 23. 23. I, re I left in 1996. You are not yet born, right? So, my son, um, there's that sense of belonging. Okay, but uh, there is also uh, this feeling of security when when you are held by him, the mighty one. But also, what I was saying is that um, you need to leave some things. You need to leave some things. You need to leave some things so that when he holds you, you you are able to be held. You get it. When you have too much on you and you are not giving away, it's not easy for somebody to say, let's move. Because it's too much on you. The earthly pressures, the richness, the whatever. There are many people who want some of these things. Share with them. Right? Yes, share with them some of these things so that it's not too much, not too bulky. But it's also okay that don't forget the Lord in all the things that you are doing. In other words, don't be overtaken by them. The best way to enjoy those things is when you share them with somebody. When you hold on to them, you'll not, get, you'll not be able to stretch your hand to say, God, here I am. Use me for what you want to use me for. Because you are here grumbling on to this and that and the other one and the other one, so you'll not be able to say, God, take me for what you want to use me. To receive his hand as he says, where are you, my son? Because uh, the scripture says that um, he will stretch his right hand and hold you. So give your worries and cares to God so that uh, you don't hold on to things, earthly things, so much. Uh, and when you have them, let them be used of the Lord. Let them use it for scripture. Let them use it to, to, to magnify the Lord. Not to magnify you, but to magnify the Lord. Eh? When, you have, when God has blessed you with these things, use them to magnify his name. Are we together? Then you'll not be lost, you're left alone. He will hold on to you. Are we together? Good. 
Stay alert. Read the Bible and understand the Bible properly. Don't sway by the people who just wake up one day and say, I have a church and I'm preaching and this is it. But stay alert, read the Bible, understand scripture so that you're not swayed. If you're swayed and what you worship is different from the Lord himself, he will leave you alone. Stand strong, stand firm, and be strong in the faith. God will restore you, will support you, strengthen you, and will place you on a firm foundation. As I said before, don't hold on to earthly things. Riches, power, prestige, trendy things, what are the things? You know, the things can take us away. Am I communicating? Yeah, there are so many things that are too many. I don't know. These gadgets here, you can want to pray, to pray. And when you, your phone says, kri, kri, there is something that tells you, let me first look at the phone. Like my sister <laughs> wanted to pray, and she was like, ah, ah, let me know. Those things come. It's, when the phone just rings or something, you want to pick the phone to answer somebody. And as you answer somebody, many things are in that phone and you are like, I want to do this and this and this. Fo let's focus. Let's not be on those trendy things of the world. Some of them cut them off. They don't mean much to us. Because I just want you to do an experiment one day. You be on your phone and at the end of the day, you measure progress. Progress in terms of what you've got from there. What have you put in your head? What can you apply? I'm telling you there is almost nothing. Unless there's a channel for a good card show, production, engineering. That is the one that will, 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 <laughs> will give us wisdom. But these things of, you know, um, funny things. Actually, they are funny. The other Sunday, Reverend was telling us is it, uh, that there's something they are saying, is it who? Murikwe, don't run. Muyife, don't run. Is it Muyife, don't run? And you find you're also creating things, Muyife. Now, what is that? Some things, let them go. Let them just go. Leave them. Because that time, you can think, you can innovate, and you can do something that will stand the test of time. There, there is some group of young boys, electrical engineers and ICT engineers, who did something innovative for their village, for the security of their village. You cannot do those things when you are into this sea. Is it Muyife Muyikwe? You cannot. You need this space of yours to think. You need this space of yours which is peaceful. You need this sense of understanding, sense of belonging. You need to be satisfied in the heart. And who brings all of these to you is when someone is holding on to you. So these are the things you have to do to be able to attract God to hold you. Magnify him. Know that he's God, your, your, your God, your God. He's the Lord, he's the mighty one. Make space for him in your heart. Make space for him. Make an altar for him. 3 a.m., if you have made a routine to pray, wake up and pray, as she was saying. And then he will be there for you. He will give you that peace, that peace which will give us the innovation that the people of the Lord want. And you will be a very useful member of this earth. And then he will say, I send you to subdue the earth. You have subdued the earth. But don't just be there on earth eating and drinking and then time comes, you go. God will ask you, what have you done now? What did you do that is different? Because you are your own copy. There's no copy of you anywhere else. God made you purposely, you, 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 you. And you are just different. You are in his image, but you are different. He gave you different abilities. So there's a way you're supposed to do things that she comes in also and maybe connects with that and adds more value, adds more value. And before you know it, things are moving. Let me tell you another story. Six 
100 years ago, the guys in the north, the guys in the north, do you know them? In the northern hemisphere, much, much north, eh? northern hemisphere, in the land which is very cold. These people sat down and, say, and looked around and said, what can work for us? Because their climate is so bad, cold, too, too cold, uh, they are just extremes. There is when the sun shines throughout. Eh? At around 10 p.m. in the night, the sun is shining. And you are like, aren't you going to sleep? I, I, actually, they tell you to go to sleep. You are like, how can I sleep when the sun is? In the morning, at around the 4 a.m., 3 a.m., you are supposed to be deep asleep. But the, you know, the place is so bright that you can't sleep if you don't put on something to close your eyes. So you wonder, what shall we do? So those guys sat down and said, we have to do something. Those ancestors of these guys there, eh? they sat down and did something. And what they did was, let's do A, B, C, D, so that whatever we do, feed is into. For instance, now if we say, let's innovate in agriculture, uh, what would we do, for instance, if I was the one, if I was a, like a minister of agriculture now, what I would do is make sure there is a zonal office or a zonal part of the ministry or which is in charge. Maybe if Mbarara is good for milk, that zonal office is for milk only. I mean for milk, partly for milk and for other things. If uh, Gulu is good for cotton, the zonal office is in charge of cotton. If uh, Bugisu area, it is, uh, I think, coffee. Someone is in charge of coffee. So that uh, this zonal office is responsible for advising farmers, planting. All those things are brought to them, to them instantly, to them. The, the, the planting, uh, harvesting, when to plant, what chemicals to use to spread their crops. And when we, you harvest for us, you get money straight away because we have us, we have market for your things. Eh? We have market for your things. So you get money straight away, use it for school fees, use it for this, for this and that and that and that. So that's what they did. They did some innovation in a way that whatever they do feeds into their systems. Whatever they do feeds into their systems. Before you know it, they have passed they had passed all the uh, evolutions and uh, they were on top of everything, top of everything, to an extent that sometimes, let me tell you, let me challenge you by the way, that even a university graduate, sometimes, our system feeds them indirectly or directly. Uh, so I was some friend of mine, I asked him that what would you consider a most successful person, an economist who is most successful? What he told me was, uh, study at Macquarie University, economics, first class, you go to Harvard, wherever, masters and PhD, and then you work for the World Bank, and then what next? And World Bank is in Washington, D.C. There is a local office here, but the other one is in Washington, D.C. So what next? Work for the hard bank, also your kids for the same trend. What next? Nothing done here. No innovation from your top brains. We need to come back and do that. We need to spare time and think through all of that. So you'll find that our education feeds the other side because the World Bank does not feed us at all. It feeds the other economies, not our economy. Because the currency of the World Bank is not our currency, is not at all. Eh? We don't put anything, everything that goes in the World Bank in terms of profit and everything is not ours. It's for somebody else. Now you want to go and work for them. That's the most successful person that you can think about. No. Come here and innovate and do something that what, when it grows, at the end of the day, we shall see ourselves growing, creating employment and all those things. But how do we get there? You can only get there when you magnify the name of the Lord, when he, he gets your hand and your part and parcel of it.
Joseph's story is a typical example of uh, resilience. Resilience. In, in imagining the Lord, you're not, it's, not a, it's not just business as usual sometimes. There is suffering in it. There is uh, taking a notch higher, even in the sufferings. Uh, the story with Joseph, the tribulation is begin when he was being thrown in the pit. They want to first kill him, his brothers. Then from there, he went to be uh, a slave. From there, he was a prisoner, but he kept the norm of God high. Joseph knew that amidst all this, God is the mighty. So you see how Joseph, at the end of the day, uh, became the prime minister, I think, of Egypt. Was it prime minister? Someone bigger than Nabanja. He was in charge of, uh, I think, agriculture of that country, and he was uh, the most doer of things in that area. The pharaoh was above him, but this Joseph was the doer of everything. And now he saved his, uh, his father's house, a generation, and saved the people from Africa, from North Africa. So, the one who created us wants us to hold him. And when we hold him, we stretch his hand for him to hold us. We shall have that good environment. We shall have that sense of belonging. We shall have that security. We shall have, you know, we shall have uh, the peace that I talked about, that piece that enables you to do very, very many things. So, the things that we accumulate, or the trendy things that are around us, or the friends that are around us, all these have to be traded well with stretching our hand for God to receive it. You get, you get me? Trade them very carefully. If it is too much, too much things that you have. Now, the older people, not the students, that you have accumulated, uh, let them be used of the Lord's name. Let them turn somebody to Christ, those things that you have, you have accumulated. Hmm? If, you, some, if there's anything trendy, let it be trendy things that you introduce in agriculture, in something, in manufacturing, in something else. Eh? that makes us go to another level, that makes God's people enjoy their land, the land that God has given us. You are supposed to subdue this land. Eh? Subduing the land means use it carefully for you and for your generations. Eh? It should feed you. Are we together? Yeah. So, 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 you, so to do it, you have, to, you have to, to have the hand of the Lord who gives you that peace. So, shall we accept to be held, our hands to be held? Shall we clean our hearts for him to receive us as his children? Shall we make our hands free for him to stretch his right hand to us so that we are his and only his? And we get that peace and we get that belonging. Are we together? Have I triggered something in us that uh, we need the Lord, we need him so much to be part of the equation for our land, for us to subdue the land that he has given us? Am I talking? Yes. So those things that we are supposed to do, the giving ourselves to him, Humble yourself under the mighty power of, 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 of God. Give your worries and cares to God. Be alert. Do not be strayed away. Stand firm and be strong, strong in the faith. You can only do that when you have given yourself to him. But, who, but also, I, I didn't want to, 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 to say who God is, but he's mighty. He's mighty. Uh, the scripture says that if you can turn grass into 
pens and turn the ink of the of the oceans uh, turn the water of the oceans into ink and you write you could not finish about his goodness you cannot finish about his strength a typical example is this one who god is recently there was there will be also posts saying that um, while the other guys are working doing abcd africans are praying prayer has a solution in our daily lives prayer makes us get close to god prayer is the vehicle to talking to god appreciating him and thanking him and also asking him for better things in the future but above all making us understand what we are meant to do why we are here and what we are meant to do eh? why we are here and what we are meant to do so god in his goodness recently 2019 october november december january 2020 february march what happened in those days who remembers that was covid actually 2019 from i think may then it hit us in around march mid march but if you get the stories of how people were dying around october there november and december how they were dying in the, in those countries whose health system is so neat and so up to date how they were dying of covid and you would be like ha ha if it reaches here isolation unit of mulago how it looks like you are like we are finished god does not forget his own if you want to quantify the impact of covid in terms of death the other side and in africa in uganda you will see that god is with us that's how powerful he is he can do things that you just don't understand there is another prayerful doctor from south africa who his story is that he came from sudan on foot to nairobi kenya where he wanted to settle he did not get good reception in in nairobi kenya very prayerful doctor he moved all the way to south africa slowly he moved on foot about 15 years of age 15 years of age the boy moved up to south africa he became a doctor the doctor of lungs i don't know how they call them how do they call them eh lunga something eh <laughs> this guy did amazing things his story is that those guy there is a time you would reach a ventilator and then they say there is mucus everywhere so you cannot breathe you cannot do what so they are trying to clear off mucus they even don't know which side you should you should you should you should, you should do eh? they should put you on the bed it was just hard but he had a solution for that he says under his care no patient died under his care no patient died a prayerful man of god and doctor of lungs brothers and sisters you can only do what you are meant to do on earth when you receive the lord when you call god your savior amen, amen. if there is anybody who this after, this evening wants to give his life to jesus christ wants to say that he wants to stretch his hands so that god can hold him you come here and live and pray for us come forward and river and will pray for us that's how mighty god is that's what he does that's what people who believe in god eh, can do things in a way you don't understand 
that is the God that we believe in. That's the God that we pray. We pray to. If there's anyone who wants to renew his relationship with Jesus, who wants to say, Lord, here I am, use me for the glory of your kingdom. Just come forward and reverend will pray for us. If there is anybody you want to renew, you want to do it for the first time, if there's anyone, just come forward and say, and God will hear us. But otherwise, thank you so much. It was nice talking with you. Yeah, thank you so, so much. And uh, that is me. We shall pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this evening. Thank you, Father, for using us, King of Glory, so that we magnify your name, King of Kings. Father, in your greatness, King of Glory, we humble before you, Father. We are your children, King of Glory. We don't have much without you, King of Glory. We have nothing without you, King of Kings. It's only you, Father. We thank you. We glorify you. King of glory, use each of us here for the glory of your kingdom. In your great name I have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us put our hands again together to thank God. Amen. For Ingenia, the the Chinya, the Chifumbira name. Bira. Vera, Vera Hose, Vera Vose, be for all. In Lukons, it is Ubiwa Vose. So let us I'll again thank God for using him. He has given us a wonderful challenge of a relationship between a father and a son. That's what Jesus came to make us become. That we have someone in heaven we call our somebody shout amen. amen. Tell your neighbor you have someone you call your father. And when Jesus came he's, he made it a purpose. He made it a purpose and confirmed it. He said even when I'm going back to heaven Hallelujah. I'm not leaving you as the Holy Spirit from heaven is coming to be with you. Can you project for us this verse? Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. So that you get confidence that someone will hold you. There is someone to hold you. In whatever situation you are passing through, there is someone. Ephesians 1, 13. Can we enjoy reading the word of God together? Move. In him, you were also... Uh -huh, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, we are sealed... Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until somebody shout amen? Yeah. I want to teach in the NIV, please. NIV, you have used this S, 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 what, what? NIV 1984. We'll do that, we'll do that better. Mm -hmm. Good. That one is better. We go again. And you also, we are included in Christ. When you heard the word of uh -huh, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a what? With a what? And what is that seal? Somebody shout amen. 
to be assured that you, you are a Ugandan today, the Ugandan government demands for you to be holding a card known as what? National what? Now, to confirm that we have a belonging in heaven, we are marked in God with a what? And what is that seal? Tell your neighbor you have a what? You have a what? He does not only live in us, but he's, he is living in us and in who? So as long as the Holy Spirit lives in you, you live in who? You live in who? That's why Peter, uh, Paul says that we are lifted from the world and we live with Christ in heavenly. So we don't belong here. Tell your neighbor, I don't belong here. You are marked in God with a what? A seal. And it is by that promise that in whatever situation we live in, we pass through, we are sure someone is holding on us. Somebody say amen. And that girl who sold the two thieves and four thieves at the end. <laughs> the Holy Spirit did not leave her. Someone is holding them. Put up your arm and we pray together. Stand up, stand up, please. Stand up. If you are not sure of this promise in your life, if you have been a Christian for many years, but you are not sure to be, whole, to be having the seal, imagine any authentic paper or certificate from Makere University must hold a what? That proves it is what? Now, above that, me and you, somebody shout amen. Me and you have a seal. Have a seal from where? We are children of God, not by words, but by what? And the seal of the Holy so if you know that the Holy Spirit does not live in you, can you request him to come now and tell him I also need the affirmation. The what? The affirmation that I belong. Someone who loves that so that you have a pride. You have something to say. Mm. No money, but Jesus is around. Somebody say amen. No fees, but Jesus no shoes, but Jesus is. Put up your arm like this and we pray together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And you will shout these words of victory. Say Jesus. Louder than that. Say Jesus. Son of the living God. You have promised that you will hold us on. Your words to the disciples. You declared that even when I'm going back to the Father, I'm going in the physical, but returning in the spirit. And when the spirit comes, you will know that I am in the Father and you are in me. So today, I call upon you. I call upon you come and be in me. I need that relation. I need the affirmation. I need the seal to affirm that I'm your child. And you have promised the Holy Spirit will come. I put on my arm and you release him upon my life. And I confess you as my Lord as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for the relation, for the relation, and for accepting me as a child. In Jesus' name, somebody shout! Put your hands again up. Put your hands again up. Why don't you just come running so that Reverend Irene, the chaplain, pronounces blessings upon your life. Come running ahead. Come running. Come running.
Thank you, Reverend Eileen. I just wanted to talk a small thing which engineer has forgotten. I went to the same class with engineer from primary one. And when we talk about God holding us, he has held us. I remember engineer and I having nothing, not even shoes. Possibly he had one shirt and he had one dress. We were seated in the same class, maybe same chair, having maybe two, five books, these small exercise books. Why I say God held us? Engineer was blind. He had a lot of mathematics in his head. Hey? This man was admired. In fact, when we finished P7, uh, there were only two schools in Kisolo. Seseme and Mutolele. Seseme for girls, Mutolele for boys. Everyone would keep thinking about the blight boy. You know, how girls can, small letters, at that time there were no phones, eh? But I thank God that God held us, held him. <laughs> that he can stand and testify because most of our eight mates are no more. They died because they were taken up. So, be encouraged that some of you are good engineers and future servants of God. Praise God. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, my sister. I saw many put, people putting up their hands. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you were praying to get. Uh, and it's like many of you are already know, know Christ. So I want to ask two of these guys who have come here. I want you to tell us what, how do you want us to pray for you? Hey. Praise God. Amen. My name is Adong Winifred. I year two student of Bachelor of Science in Human Nutrition. So me, I want Reverend to hold me and pray for my family for deliverance. Praise the Lord. My name is Oumudisha Ishame. For me, I'm here, Reverend, to pray for me. Um, my salvation and relationship with God to be renewed. And God <laughs> and God to guide me at my job. I thank God who gave me a job, but I need his guidance and wisdom so that I can be able to manage what I do. Thank you. Okay. Let us pray. I'm going to pray a general prayer. But that general prayer is going to be heard by the Lord God Almighty. Who knows what each one of us need. Even those people who are in the congregation. Let us pray. Father Almighty, you are the sovereign Lord. You are the Lord God Almighty. Nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with you. You are the all-knowing God. You know these people who have come here in front. And you know their heart's desire. Lord, you know those people who stayed there, but they put up their hands. You know, Lord God, their heart's desire. And your word says that delight yourself in the Lord. And he will grant you the desires of your heart. Heavenly King, I pray, King of glory, that you meet each one of us' heart's desire. Because, Lord, nothing is impossible with you. Lord God, I pray that you deliver those that need your deliverance. Those that have been hooked onto drugs, alcohol, witchcraft, social and witchcraft. Lord, may you deliver them, O oh Lord. Deliver these, your children. Deliver their family members, O oh King of Glory. Wherever they have gone astray, O oh King of Glory. Because our talk today was 
I will hold the God will hold your hand. May you hold their hand. Those whose weak, whose whose faith is weak, Lord, hold their hand and cause them, O oh Lord God, to live a life that glorifies your holy name. There are those who are in lack. They lack tuition. They lack money for hostel. They lack money for feeding. Lord, we know you as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides. May you provide for them, O oh Lord. There could be those that are unwell. Lord, you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God who heals. May you stretch out your mighty hand of healing upon those that are unwell and heal them, O oh King of glory, heavenly King. We have gathered here together, O oh Lord. And Lord God, your word clearly tells us that ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. No, can the door shall be open unto you. Lord, may you meet each one of us' need. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So you can go back and sit. The good news is that the day after tomorrow, there is a what? A physical overnight. So please come for that overnight, physical overnight, when we shall have extended time of prayer. Please do not miss that overnight. We are going to give to God right now. And as you give to God, remember God loves what? A cheerful giver. So please give cheerfully. And let us stand up as this great choir leads us in some songs of praise and worship. Let us stand up as we praise the Lord with them. Please do not uh, dance and forget to give your offering. Hallelujah. Give your offering as you dance and celebrate. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Come on, let me see you. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Come on. Look, 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 look. See what the Lord has done. Come on, let me sing with you. Come on, let me summon. Look, 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 See what the Lord has done. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Look, 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 See what the Lord has done. Come on, come on. Let me see this. Look, 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 See what the Lord has done.
Zaki Dibaye. How many believe in God? What is it? He has done in our lives? Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Come on, come on, come on. We say, I got me a Somebody hear me say, I got me Come on, let me hear. I got me Hallelujah. Somebody let me say, I got me Hallelujah. I got me Are you ready? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody. Let's give him praises. When I remember what you've done for me. Yeah. When I remember what you've done for me, Lord. Say, when I remember what you've done for me. When I remember what you've done for me. Yeah, I'm catching that committee. Yeah, I'm catching that committee. Yeah, I'm catching that committee. So tell me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. One, two, we go. We go. Take it up. Take it up. Take it up. Give it up, oh God. One more time. One more time. One, two, one, two. Bring it down. Hallelujah. Give God a shout of praise. He deserves our praises. He's a mighty God. He's a working God. Let's pray for the offertory. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for the offertory and give thanks to God for the praise that we offer to God. Father, indeed, there's nothing that we can do to you compared to what you do, always do to us. Don't let you want to commit ourselves to you, want to surrender our lives to you, want to surrender the praise, such a moment that we give us a joy that we just could cry Jesus Christ. Father, accept us as your children. Accept this offering that your children have given to you for the glory and amazing and fight to do your work in this place and make the, the, the ministry grow. I want to give you glory to our God, Father. We trust you because you always hold us in your righteous hand. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Receive all this for the glory that we will always give to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We will all remain standing as we continue in prayer. The peace of God always be with you. Turn to your neighbor and give that peace of God to your neighbor. Say, peace of God be with you. Praise the Lord. Is the Father with us? Is Christ among us? Is the spirit here? Yes. This is our God. We are his people. We are Lift up your hearts. Lift your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our, our delight to give you thanks and praise. Great Father, living God. Supreme over the world, creator, provider, savior, and giver of life. From a, an, a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you have sent your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with your light and life. Therefore, with angels, 
and archangels, faithful ancestors, and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, honor of all things, we thank you for giving up your son to die for us on the cross, who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks, and he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is said for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We are brothers and sisters because of his blood. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making atonement for the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted this offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. Jesus is Lord. This is the feast of victory. And as Jesus taught his disciples, may we all join in the family prayer and pray together. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it's in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as you forgive those who sin against us. Deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ is alive forever. We are one body. Draw near with faith. Amen. You may be seated now.
know him as we conclude this our service your love has taken over me yes, I've learned to depend on you I've got confidence in you you won't Thank you. 